The Wake County Board of Commissioners recently held a public hearing for Wake County Human Services fiscal year 2015 through 2020 affordable housing consolidated plan. The plan describes the housing and community revitalization needs for low to moderate income families here in the county. Joining us to talk about the plan is Anne Marie Mariano, the director, and Emily Fishbein, the community development planner with the county's Housing and Community Revitalization Office. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Eric. I guess the first question is, what is this consolidated plan? So the consolidated plan is a five-year strategic plan that's required by us to submit to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, it's a comprehensive plan. It addresses the housing and community development needs throughout the county. It describes the needs of the population, the market analysis of the situation in the county, the uh, programs that we intend to do to help fulfill those needs. Now, Anne-Marie, why is this plan so important to Wake County? So the plan is important, um, first of all, because it's a requirement in order for us to receive significant grants from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. We receive community development block grant funds, home funds, and housing opportunities for persons with AIDS funds as a result of the plan. But it's really, Eric, more than a grant application. It is a, sole, a single document that guides housing policy throughout Wake County. So we have our grant requirements in there, but we also have a full listing of all of the programs that are run through Wake County. And it explains how we're going to use those programs in tandem with the grant money to meet the housing community development needs over the next five years. In this case, it's 2015 through 2020. So it's important. It's important that we set the priorities and that we go and, and that we, have, we consistently follow through and implement in our budgets what the prior, what the needs are, or what the programs are that address the needs. Okay, well, Emily, does this, the development of this plan, uh, does it involve any kind of community process? Yes, it involves an extensive community process. Um, I went out into the communities, I had about 13 different meetings with different groups to inform them about the plan, to gather input, so we can directly address the needs that we heard about. Some of these meetings were with service providers, some of them were with tenant councils at affordable apartment complexes, and some were regional meetings for citizens. I also met individually with the planning directors of all nine towns in Wake County to talk to them about their community development needs. We also had two public hearings, which um, were held here at, at the county to gather even more input. Anne Marie, what are some of the programs that operate as a result of this plan? We yes, we've got some really great programs. We've got some programs that we've been operating um, for 20 years. We make repairs to the homes um, to people who live in homes that are either elderly or disabled. Um, these repairs help them to stay in their home, and they prevent them from prematurely having to go to a nursing facility simply because they can't um, use their home. Um, we you know help with ramps and upgrades to bathrooms and we eliminate trip hazards and widen doorways and these might seem like simple repairs but they make or break whether or not somebody gets to stay in the house and live independently as long as they possibly can which is what most people want to do. We also do um, gap financing. We make loans and grants to developers of affordable housing up throughout the county and we've been doing this program for a long time too. It's important to note that all of the housing that Wake County um, has any assistance in or participation in is all privately owned. And we have about 2,700 units throughout the county right now of housing specifically for people who are low and moderate income um, and or people who have special needs, special uh, disability. Um, but we also do, you know, every year we look, and we, or every five years actually, as we do this consolidated planning process, we don't just keep to the same programs. We look as our population changes, what the specific needs are for the population. We have a small amount of money compared to a great need. So we really have to target and partner with other agencies and entities to maximize the dollars. In the past, we've done a large focus on people who have a mental illness, the street homeless, to try to get housing and services. We also provide rental assistance because we know we can't build our way out of the deficit of affordable housing. We have enough money for about 100 units a year. We've got a demand for about 25,000 units. So we also work with over 70 landlords and provide rental assistance for people who are homeless and disabled 
who live in the housing and then receive services in the housing. And you mentioned um, a little bit about the, the homeless. Um, the county does a, a great job, and I'm sure uh, your staff would like to do more as it relates to getting uh, members of, of this community into some type of safe, affordable housing. Absolutely, and um, we do focus, the consolidated plan has an entire section that's dedicated toward um, homeless, the needs of the homeless population. We have about 1,100 homeless people in Wake County on any given night. And what we've done um, through Emily's leadership is we are working with the city of Raleigh to develop a single homeless plan. Because it never made much sense to us that the homeless plan for the county would be different than the homeless plan for the city. The city has its own community development department and they receive the same grants that we do. Um, they, they basically spend their money in the city and we spend our money outside the city, but homelessness really transcends um, a, a municipal ba barrier. You, you're homeless in Garner or you're homeless in Raleigh. One day you're homeless in Garner, one day you're homeless in Raleigh. So it makes sense to have a seamless approach, which for the first time this year in this consolidated plan we're doing, and Emily and I are very excited about that. Well, good news there. Emily, what are some of the priorities uh, of this plan for the next five years? Well, Anne-Marie was just talking with you, Eric, about the homeless situation, about how we'd like to address that. So one of the priorities is to have um, sort of a one-stop shop, a central intake center for homeless individuals and families to present so that if somebody's homeless, they know where to go. They don't have to figure out a complicated system just to get the assistance that they really need. And from there, they can then receive more specific assistance. So that's a priority. Another priority, speaking of homeless again, is we've noticed from these community meetings and conversations that there's really a dearth of shelter housing for single women. A lot of agencies will focus on families, as they should, focusing on children, um, but a lot, a lot of times single women don't have a shelter bed. So that's in one area we're focusing on. In addition, another group that has emerged as having needs is youth who are aging out of foster care. The Wake County Human Services has a big um, foster, foster care program for youth, but when they reach a certain age, they often have no opportunities. So that's a need that we're going to partner with uh, the Hope Center, which is an agency that works with these children. Another priority is uh, veterans. Veterans are always a priority, and we're very concerned that we can do enough to help veterans with housing. Two more priorities would be um, affordable housing for seniors. As we know, the population is aging. And Anne-Marie mentioned our rehabilitation program, so that's an area of importance, as well as continuing to build affordable housing for seniors, as well as the affordable housing for families and affordable housing for working low-income people. Okay, and Anne-Marie, what other information have you discovered about the current consolidated plan? So I think the things that, and I've been doing, I've been involved with the county for a number of consolidated plans, and the real thing that we're doing with this 2015 to 2020 plan is, you know, really making it a seamless plan with other municipalities. Now, we do partner with nine towns already, but, you know, Cary has its own consolidated plan and Raleigh has its own consolidated plan, and what we're really trying to do is align our goals and objectives and align our priorities. So that's definitely different. And um, Emily and I are just really excited about being able to offer something to youth who are aging out of foster care. Because we have services, but we don't have housing. And a lot of times these kids just don't have a way to address what they need to do to become self-sufficient and go out and get the job that they need to also pay their rent. And it ends up being very stressful for them as they're trying to navigate their way through um, figuring out what they're going to do with the rest of their lives. So if we can offer a little stability for a short term in housing, they can go to school and possibly get a degree and then they can go on to be more self-sufficient. So this speaks volumes to prevention because we do know that youth aging out of foster care are at risk for homelessness. And so if we can prevent it, with this short-term rental assistance, then we've helped somebody not slip into homelessness and have to get them at that end. Uh, good points. And finally, when do you expect some of the activities to begin to take effect? So the, the plan um, 
July 1st of 2016 is when our new fiscal year begins and we will we'll come out of the gates running with that. So I think that really that, you know, we'll have our one year budget set up and, um, you know, July 1st is the year that we'll start our next consolidated plan. Best of luck to you, thank you. both. Anne-Marie Mirano, Emily Fishbein with Wake County Human Services, thank you, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us.